Hello everybody. Uh, today I'm going to try and do a full review of my 300 Winchester Magnum Ruger Precision Rifle. I uh, will try to cover all the functional basics of the rifle that uh, I can think of once we get out to the range. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about the scope I selected for the rifle and my rationale for the scope and rationale for uh, how I set the scope up and uh, what I'm planning to use the rifle for. I decided that uh, my next couple of hunting trips I'm going to go to places where the uh, shots on my quarry are longer. Most of my uh, hunting in the past I stock in and get close and take my animal probably within 100 to 150 yards, sometimes down to 50 yards. I've uh, bow hunted in the past, got in as close as 15 yards on some bucks I've taken. And I uh, seem to get a deer every year. I don't always manage to bring down the big ones, the elk. Uh, that's kind of hit or miss in the state where I've hunted. But uh, this year I'm going after antelope and uh, I'm uh, going to head over to Wyoming with my son and so I bought myself a Ruger precision rifle not because it's designed for hunting it's really a precision shooting target rifle but I, uh, I'm going to take it with me and if I do see an antelope out to a thousand yards I'm going to use it. If uh, son and I happen to get in closer and he wants to take a shot at something shorter with his 7mm Remington mag or, or I decide you know we're uh, not getting very lucky on, the, on bringing the meat home then I might go back to my 300 Weatherby Magnum at a shorter range and uh, take something at a shorter range but I want to bring the long range gun with me and I've uh, set my Ruger precision rifle up just for that task. Now the one thing I'm having uh, trouble with here locally is I live in uh, eastern Washington which is highly populated and there are no nearby rifle ranges where I can shoot out past 200 yards. So later on this spring when it warms up a little bit I'll take a trip over to eastern Washington and try to find a nice secluded place where I can uh, dial out to the extended ranges before I go on my Wyoming hunting trip which will probably be in late September early October uh, assuming I get drawn a uh, tag for there but anyway I, I purchased the gun for the purpose of just enjoying target shooting with it and eventually hoping to take a long-range antelope with it so that introduction uh, concluded, we'll uh, flip on over to uh, Custard Sportsman Club here and I'll uh, talk about the gun and talk about how I've got it set up and then we'll take a few shots and see how it does. So anyway, here we go, we'll, uh, we'll head on over to Custard Sportsman Club in Northeast Washington. Okay, we're out here at Kessler Sportsman's Club. I'm on uh, Bay 6. We've got a set of targets here on Bay 6. Uh, approximately 50 yards, approximately 75 yards, and down at the longest end here is about 100 yards. So that's Bay 6. Now uh, down here at Bay 7, we uh, have a 200 yard range, which we'll get to in a little bit. And of course the purpose of this was to do a quick review of the Ruger Precision Rifle. Okay, we're about the rifle. I'm going to start up here at the business end of the rifle and we'll work our way back. Number one, the uh, the Ruger Precision Rifle Magnum Rifles come with this particular type of 
muzzle brake. You'll see it's got four um, Allen screws there which you can use to increase the porting uh, keep the muzzle from jumping up if you want to. I've never used it. It's also got a large locking nut here. I had to uh, remove that and level this out of the box with the uh, hand guard here and it was slightly tilted from the factory this particular gun but anyway I uh, found out it was very difficult to remove the locking lug nut and then get it back tight and get get the uh, muzzle brake level so that was my first little uh, experience with the muzzle brake and the last one I hope um, the handguard as you can see is a pretty nice one it's uh, it's the uh, type of handguard you can uh, make you know attach uh, different uh, items to if you need to it uh, comes out of the box with a small Picatinny rail adapter which you can set up just about any distance you want on the bottom of the rail here. And so I went ahead and used that and bought a uh, typical bipod that would uh, work with a Picatinny rail attachment. I uh, got this bipod for under 40 bucks. It's not a fancy swivel tilt bipod. It tilts a little bit, but it isn't designed to swivel left or right. Uh, you might want to get a little more expensive bipod if you're into swiveling the gun a lot, which I'm not. Uh, the next thing back here that came out of the box was a 30 MOA canted Picatinny rail which is nice if your scope is not a high powered scope with a long range of adjustability and uh, you'll be able to still reach out quite a ways with this 30 MOA rail on there uh, I got a 8 by 40 power Burris XTR 2 scope with the uh, 50 millimeter objective and it's also got a 32 millimeter body so I went ahead and bought the Burris signature rings that go with it this particular scope I've got it mounted so that it's two inches above the barrel center to center uh, I also took out 20 MOA cant using the uh, signature rings here insert so right now the scope itself instead of being at a uh, minus 30 MOA it's at a minus 10 MOA this particular scope has a lot of adjustability in the vertical so I uh, decided it was hard to get on paper at 50 yards and I uh, put took out some of the uh, MOA on the canting in order to sight in at 50 and then move on out when I first bought the rifle. I like this Burris scope except for one feature. If you should happen to remove the turret and lock it down and zero it, then you have no adjustability in the down direction. So what I've done is I found out that if you leave point Zero, two, zero inches of space between the, the vertical base here and the vertical cap and then lock the cap in. You can actually adjust this scope down up to as much as 30 clicks and still be able to adjust it up. Uh, they probably don't recommend that at the, you know, from the factory or the support team, but that's what I've done and I've through trial and error I found out that that was possible with this particular scope. The scope also has illumination up to 10 different uh, illumination uh, what would you call it powers. It's got your uh, focus on the left and of course your range on the right. 
this particular scope is one eighth inch or one eighth MOA per click at 100 yards. Um, and I also added on the uh, Burris bubble level there. So, nice scope. Uh, you can uh, check out some of my other videos for more information on the reticle and, uh, and other information that you might want to know about that scope. Now back here we've got a fully adjustable cheek piece and shoulder piece. But one thing you need to be really careful of is that you lock this puppy down. If, if you haven't got this locked down and it slides forward on you, it's possible for this locking uh, lever here to get stuck inside one of these one of these slots here and then you have a hell of a time unlocking it to get the thing back out that happened to me once and boy did I did I uh, have a time finally freeing that back up So anyway, you've got one locking lever here for your cheek piece and one locking lever for your uh, shoulder distance. And so that works as long as you're really careful that you don't, I would say you're better off to, uh, to not even have this pointing in that direction if you can. Point it in a direction that should this come forward, it will not you know, get the uh, lever caught in one of those slots. Okay, moving along to the uh, safety and trigger again. Okay, the safety as you can see is forward or down for fire and up or level for safe. And it's got a nice adjustable trigger with a uh, trigger safety release here. So in order for this trigger to operate, you have to have your finger the trigger quite tightly and then it'll release the trigger. The trigger is uh, adjustable I think but about two pounds on up to six it comes out of the comes out of the box with a pretty light trigger so I have not touched adjustment on the trigger. I liked it the way it was and uh, I get some pretty good groups without a whole lot of pull on that trigger. Now the other thing is the magazine release is right here. It's just a spring-loaded spring-loaded magazine release. And uh, when you put the magazine up into the uh, magazine well, you have to have it perfectly straight to slide it up in there. Some people have a little trouble getting the magazine lined up perfect before it'll slide up on you. Now this shoulder piece has to be opened in order to uh, put your bolt in. And the way you do that is by pressing the button on this side and releasing this sh the shoulder piece, which then opens up and allows you to run your bolt down the uh, down the receiver here. Now, also this particular bolt has a hidden chamber here where you can screw off the cap and inside is your trigger adjustment tool. Uh, and maybe a couple other tools I forget. You'll have to look that one up. But anyway, the uh, bolt only goes about that far until it stops. So to get the bolt in or out, there's a release lever or a release button, you might see it's kind of a slotted button. So you have to push that 
in order to be able to move your bolt in and out. I don't know if you saw that or not. I need a, what I need is a cameraman to do these reviews more professionally. But anyway, once you've uh, released that, then the bolt will go in and out. You can get the bolt all the way forward and locked. Then you can go ahead and shut and lock your shoulder. Um, it comes with two five round magazines. And I have zeroed this rifle in using these Hornady Superformance GMX 165 grain 300 wind mags. I like this round. It, uh, it's very consistent. Hornady does a good job of creating consistent ammunition. It's got a very high uh, muzzle velocity out of this 26 inch barrel. Okay, there's one more thing I wanted to discuss. Uh, before I hung up this uh, review is this three-sided bolt on the uh, Ruger Precision Rifle. You'll notice it's got a ejector pin here and it's got an extractor over on the left. This extractor is held in by a small spring underneath it and a ball bearing. And if you get to cleaning this bolt with something that's metal versus soft, like I use toothbrush usually to clean the uh, bolt, but if you get to pushing on the extractor to the left too hard, it'll actually pop out of there. The little ball bearing that's underneath of it is it'll shoot into the total unknown and the spring might even come out so you need to be really careful when you're cleaning this that you don't push too hard on the extractor and end up having to go give a call to Ruger and have them send you a ball bearing or a couple of ball bearings and put this puppy back together again so just keep that in mind you know, it's different than a lot of extractors on other kinds of firearms, so you can take that out of there, but it, getting it back in without losing your ball bearing is, is let's just say, challenging, all right? I uh, ended up losing two ball bearings before I finally got it back, to, back together. The original one I lost when the extractor accidentally came out, and then the uh, second one when I was trying to put it back together. So that's something to keep in mind, all right? So I think I've covered just about everything you need to know about this rifle and uh, this scope and the ammunition I use. Now, a lot of people ask me, why don't you use a 180 grain with a 300 Magnum? Well, I've heard arguments about 150 grain shooting flatter and longer and and 180 grain shooting better and more accurate because it's a heavier bullet with that twist that's in this rifle. I believe the twist rate on this is 1 in 10. And uh, in any event, I've always liked to compromise between argument A, 150 grain, and argument B, 180 grain. For uh, as far as ballistics go, this caliber reaches out and touches just about anything out to well over 1500 yards without any problems at all. I uh, shot a deer this past year with a 165 grain 300 Weatherby Magnum and uh, it went right through a uh, right leg shoulder through a heart a rib, a rib, and out. It expanded and it knocked the deer down and out in under a second. So I really don't see any reason to use a heavier bullet which has a faster drop-off range out at the longer ranges and probably just does that much more damage to the meat you're trying to take home. But that's up to you. Um, arguing about it one way or the other is kind of a new issue. The main thing is uh, 
zero your rifle in with the ammunition you're going to use and stick to the ammunition you're going to use. And in my opinion, go out and enjoy your shooting and enjoy your hunting and uh, be done with it. Basically the review is done so you can hang it up at this point if you want or you can uh, you can go ahead and uh, keep watching the rest of this video and we'll see how it does at different ranges. Okay we're starting off at exactly 50 yards here for the first couple shots. The dope card says come up three clicks on the scope once it's zeroed at 200 yards. The bullet apparently is going to be low at 50 yards. It crosses over someplace between 50 and 100 and goes high at 100 and then it drops back down at 200. Anyway, I'll go ahead and uh, take some pictures after I take a couple of test rounds here. Well, that was interesting in a couple of ways. First off, even though I brought it up three, it still hit low here at 50 yards. However, it uh, put a real nice group together. I may have to go down how low it is and adjust my dope card based on that but basically all three rounds went through pretty much the same I'm guessing uh, about one quarter inch group there so vertically it's perfect the first shot was perfect directly from the uh, bullseye now my only question is how far do I have to bring it up Obviously bringing it up three clicks didn't uh, dial it in. I ended up dialing the uh, scope in the wrong direction. So I... Uh, Ended up putting a group way low and another group even lower than that. Finally realized I'm such a knucklehead. I was dialing the scope in the wrong direction. I was dialing it down when I thought I was dialing it up. The dope card says I need to come up three clicks when I'm zeroed at 200 yards. But right now I uh, have adjusted the scope basically seven clicks up after that last bullseye shot I added one more click after that last shot so I'm gonna move up here to my second target and we'll see if I can do a group here with seven clicks up and whether or not it all fits in the uh, orange or not Okay, our next target here is out at 80 yards, and uh, hopefully I'll just get close. According to the dope card on this ammo, 80 yards I'm supposed to go minus 5 clicks. And it turns out 40 yards is like plus 9 or 10 clicks. So it was shooting at the 50 yard range as though I was shooting at the 40 yard range effectively. Uh, we'll see what happens when I take some shots here at 80, whether it comes in more true to the dope card or whether I still have to make some adjustments on the dope card. Okay, so I went with minus five on the first shot, according to the dope card, and it shot low. 
I brought it back up five. I took my second shot. So effectively, it crosses at the 80 yard mark without adjusting at all after I've zeroed it at 200. Now, I'm uh, finding out that at these closer ranges, my dope cart isn't telling me the truth. I'm going to move on out to 100 yards instead of spending more money on these shorter ranges. Now, at 100 yards, the dope cart says go minus 6. At 80 yards, it said go minus 5. Uh, on the 80 yard shot, when I went minus 5, I ended up about 1.2 inches low. So I dialed it back to the uh, zero, the 200 yard zero on the on the vertical dial, and shot the second shot dead center in a bullseye, 0 0.04 inches below the bullseye, which is just human error. Um, here at 100 yards, it says I should go minus 6, but I'm going to start out at minus 1 for my 100-yard uh, shot here, and we'll see how the first three rounds do at minus 1. I might have to make a couple of adjustments before I do a three-shot group on the uh, left-hand target to uh, go for effect. But anyway, that's the game plan. We'll see what happens. Okay, uh, first shot hit one half inch right. Prop, pretty much perfect as far as uh, altitude, as far as vertical goes. So that tells me the dope card is way off as far as this uh, ammunition. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a couple more. We do have a slight right crosswind, but I think mostly I pulled on the trigger there. If I uh, get a tight group over to the right, I'll have to adjust the windage on my uh, scope to compensate for the fact that I noticed it shot right on another shot at, at 50 yards, so could be that I need to go a click or two left on, the, on my windage, but I'm going to hold off on that right now. Too many variables to deal with. Okay, all three of those shots are inside a one inch group, but that's not good enough. And uh, it's still set at minus one click. So I'm going to go back up one click and shoot another three shot group at the left hand target. Shot one there was upper right, shot two was lower right, and shot three was lower left. So it's uh, the overall average is it's hitting about quarter inch low. Okay, after going back to 200 yards zero at 100 yards, that's what I got for shot number one. Anyway, we'll see what happens on the next couple of rounds. Okay, there's shot number two.